and uh, welcome to my little basic tutorial for uh, new players to AI War. Um, AI War has its own uh, basic tutorials, um, but some people don't like to read very much, and unfortunately uh, the strategy in AI War is unique enough that you do need the tutorials, um, but if you don't like to read, you're typically going to get bored and not make it through them. So I'm really making this for my friend uh, Crane out there. Um, who I really want to play this game, but he doesn't have the patience to go through the tutorial. So I'm going to real quick just show the basics of the game, how to play, because after you get past the, the complex interface and um, the tons of units, tons of structures, uh, you know, shock, uh, the game is actually quite simple and really, really fun. So here we go. This is a brand new campaign that I just started. Um, I'm going to tell you when I press certain key combinations with clicking, stuff like that, because it's really important uh, the way that you manage your units and stuff like that to use the keyboard along with the mouse clicks. Um, this game is built uh, against micromanaging and, and really allowing you to automate a lot of the uh, processes like healing units, protecting your planets, things like that. So. AR War is really cool. I really, really like it. Well done game. Uh, I wish more people would play it. So, anyway, but here's my tutorial that maybe will help you jump into the game faster. Uh, okay, so anyway, here we go. Here is a brand new campaign with basic options, basically all the defaults. I'm only doing a 40 uh, planet map, uh, which is just a, a shorter game than if you start with the default of like 80 planets or your maximum is like 120 planets, I think, which is would be a humongous game. I can't even imagine playing that yet, but I'm sure it's fun. Um, also, the more players that you have with you, obviously you want bigger maps. <clears throat> Just make sure your computer can handle it, because uh, this game emphasizes lots and lots of units. You will have humongous wars, which is really cool, which is one of my favorite parts of this game. And you do have a lot of different types of units uh, and structures and things like that. Resource gathering is extremely simple. Um, you do have to pay attention, obviously, to your resources because you will run out of them. But he makes it simple enough so that your your focus, after you get past the learning stage, is really on the strategy, and it's it's really cool. It's not uh, like um, a StarCraft where your focus is just it's just action, action, action. But it's uh, you know you really have to think through your your choices. Um, anyway, okay. There's my intro. I'm going to go ahead and start playing now. So, brand new campaign, what you start with, um, if you push the T key, that's your shortcut to showing you this screen here, which is just the complete uh, mini-map, I guess, of your planet. So every planet has a T screen. Um, and you have to hold down the T key while viewing it. And it allows you to move your units, um, plus monitor the activity on your planet very easily. You can see that I have four wormholes on this planet that I have not explored. If you have not explored them, they are white. That means you have no idea what is beyond them. If they are red, that means it's enemy. And then if they're your color or an ally color, then obviously you know that they are friendly wormholes. Obviously the enemy wormholes, the ones that will be red or colored as the enemy, um, are the ones that you need to set up turrets around uh, and really protect, you know, set up groups of, uh, of units. Um, now, when you start a new campaign and you, you're given your first planet, okay, this, this entire thing is a planet. You, there's no real, I mean, there's an image of a planet in the background there, but it, it really doesn't mean anything. It's just for looks. Um, really, it's just a bunch of space with some resources thrown around, and, and that's all. Uh, so, they call it a planet, but it really, <laughs> it could be called whatever, you know. So, this is my planet first planet. It's called Newich, which is up here in the top left. Uh, if I hit the tab key, this brings me to the cal galaxy view. So you can see where my four warm holes, warm holes, where they go. Um, and if I hold the control key while viewing tab, uh, now I don't have to hold down tab to keep this up. You just press it once and it stays up. So I press control and then I can see all the names of all the planets in my galaxy. So, um, and right now, uh, as you see, if I hover over it, it doesn't really tell me any information about the planets because I have not explored them. The first two goals when you start a brand new campaign is, one, make sure that your planet is defended, that you have units, that you have turrets, so that then you can concentrate on exploring without worrying about 
the AI destroying your um, initial structures and forces. Uh, the other, also good thing about a new campaign is it automatically starts you with every resource has a structure already on it and it's already starting to gather. So um, that's what these little green triangle things are. As you can see, um, if I scroll in here, here is a metal harvester. So that's already adding metal, which is up here. So I have metal, I have crystal, I have knowledge, and I have energy. Um, so there you go. All my resources are good to go. I don't have to worry about resources right off the bat. All I have to worry about is protecting those wormholes and building my first fleets. So four wormholes. Wow. Um, and I don't really have a ton of resources. So, I mean, obviously the first thing I want to do, um, the game is paused right now, but I'm going to about to unpause it, and I want to build up my fleet. Uh, you have two places where you build up a fleet. One is the space dock, the other is the starship constructor. Starships are extremely expensive, uh, very powerful. They either add bonuses to ships around them, or they themselves are um, very strong attackers or defenders depending on what starship you build. The star dock is really your main place where you're going to be building all of your ships. Um, and you have basically uh, five main classes of ships. Three are going to be the most popular for your offenses and your defenses. Uh, those are your fighters, bombers, and frigates. Um, and then you have your scouts, which are going to be used to explore planets because they move quickly. And once they get to a new planet, they automatically try to hide from the enemy so you can gather all the intel you need about that planet, which you'll find out pretty soon. Um, but anyway, so we're going to start off with um, making some fighters, some bombers, and some frigates so that this planet gets protected. So um, just like any RTS game, I can right click somewhere on the map to uh, where my completed ships will go so that I can organize everything. Um, oh, just real quick about resources, you also, on the T screen you show the triangles, so that is your metal and your crystal. Then you also have something called energy, which you get from three different reactors, and you only build one level of reactor per planet. So you have a small, medium, and large, which is a, mo a Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3. Um, and you only build one because if you try to build more than that, apparently the its efficiency rate drops, and you don't really get any benefit. So every planet that you take over, you make sure to build your um, energy reactors and build one of each type and your energy should be fine. Um, I haven't really played a game where my energy has dried up completely so it, it tends to balance really well. Um, but that's all your resources, really basic. Um, oh and then in regards to knowledge, okay so I explained when you hit T key, right, you see your metal and your crystal, here you see your energy. Knowledge is derived from these science labs which are just another space station floating around your planet. Um, they each produce two per second of knowledge. Uh, knowledge dries up really fast though on your planets and um, you really probably won't be building new science labs unless they're destroyed because once the science on this planet is gone I'll move them to a new planet so that they can continue to gain me knowledge. And you just keep on doing that because uh, well, that's, you know, there's no sense in continuing to build more science labs when you don't have to. So those, those are all the resources. Um, and knowledge is really just used for research, obviously. So that's what you would spend down here to get more advanced units, more advanced structures. Um, so right now I'm at plus two per second. Uh, one of the first things I could do is build another science lab, but I'm, I don't really want to spend my resources right away on that because they're limited. So let's just go ahead and build up our fleet and protect this planet from uh, which I'm guessing soon I will be attacked. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it and we go. So I would click on my space dock. Now if I hold the control key, it'll add five of the unit per to my queue, which is much faster than clicking a million times. So we'll do uh, ten fighters, ten bombers, ten frigates, fifteen frigates, whatever. Those build rather quickly. Make sure you have engineers close to all your space docks, because it will build many times quicker if you don't have engineers to help it. So there you go. You can see my my fleet is already building rapidly. Uh, those first level units typically build quickly, which is nice. So they just kind of flow here. You can also see this big purple bubble. That's just a force field, 
when you start a new planet, they build it for you. You don't have to worry about building it. But when you take over a new planet, make sure it's one of the first things you build. So that force field to protect your main hub, which is uh, right there, which is known as your command station.